Sarah was introduced to me as a young woman that was battling breast cancer. Sarah told us that the cancer had progressed to a terminal state. Sarah reached out to me on social media and told me that her treatment was no longer working. I was incredibly touched. Sarah told us she did have a husband, James, as well as a 15-month-old daughter named Mindy. Sarah told me that her initial goal was to do what's called a century ride, three-day ride, and one day is a 100-mile ride. I cycle regularly, and I offered to help her. Sarah came and stayed with us, and we definitely entertained her. We went out on the boat to see the flying fish. We spent most of the daytime riding bikes. Nights, we would sit in our backyard, and Brian would make dinner for us, and Sarah and I would have some really deep talks. I have never seen Sarah without either a cancer scarf on her head or a wig. At one point, she told me that she had a blood transfusion. Another time, Sarah told my wife that she was actually being stalked and being threatened by this girl. Who had uh, extreme affection for her husband, James. Sarah messaged me that the harassing posts had escalated into very detailed threats. The woman told her that she knew how to uh, make Sarah's death look like an accident and hide a body. Sarah must have messaged me a hundred times. The stalker had followed her to the gym, to the supermarket, was driving in front of her home. Supposedly there were police involved and they were trying to capture this person. I told Sarah that you hang up the phone right now and you call the police. As Sarah's stalker story progressed, so did their suspicions. I received a text message from Sarah that said, this stalker has a gun. She's chasing me. I said, just run, run, hide. I was completely freaking out. She told me that she was hiding in the shirt aisle, and that was the last contact I had until she relayed to us that the shooter was in custody. I had doubts that the shooting took place because we couldn't find any news record of it. I believed that my friend, who was dying of terminal cancer, was in a shootout. I was absolutely traumatized. We've got a friend that's in law enforcement, and he was able to confirm that this never happened. After the shooting, I came uh, across a record where Sarah had lost her nursing license in the state of Virginia because she was faking pregnancies. When I read that, every hair on my body stood up. You can fake a pregnancy, and you can definitely fake a husband and fake having cancer. It also dawned on me that I'd never spoken to James. I said, Sarah, you need to call me. The first thing I said to Sarah, I said, James isn't true. He doesn't exist. And she said no. And I said, Bindi doesn't exist, does she? And she said no. And I said, the shooting certainly never happened. And of course, she said no. Then I asked her, is the cancer real? I said, do you have breast cancer? And she said, I do. Eventually, led me to contact her family, and they confirmed that she does not have cancer. I couldn't believe it. Shock, horror, embarrassment, and betrayal. Why would you want to bring harm to someone who was so kind and so supportive of you? Like, why would you do this to me? It's one thing for Sarah to have taken advantage of my wife and her kindness. It's just horrible that she's reached out to girls that truly are sick, and it's just gut-wrenching to me. There are more people that do this kind of thing than you can imagine. It, it's really sad, but it's, it's true, and they victimize people that are willing to help, people that open their minds, open their hearts, open their homes, open their wallets, They're, and that's what happened to you, right? 100%, yeah. I, I feel completely violated. I feel preyed upon. I feel stalked by her. I, I mean, I, I'm humiliated. What pulled it at, at y'all's heart when you first got sucked in by this? I thought I had an opportunity to change someone's life for the better. And you say that she sent you photos of a brain scan. She did, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And it showed 13 lesions. 13 lesions on her brain. Right, which, I mean, that's severe. 13 lesions is pretty good coverage. I think she also knew that we had kind of limited knowledge and experience of the disease, so I just accepted it as the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. and She's very intelligent. She really did her research. Um, and one thing that she did that I found particularly distressing was she would adopt the stories of other survivors in the organization. So there uh -huh. was a young woman that we knew that had a similar experience. She did have cancer that had gone to her brain and she had similar lesions. So yeah. Sarah adopted her story as her own. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.